Welcome to our weekly Governance Voice. This is a program brought to you courtesy of the Institute of Certified Secretaries, powered by Bafunde. I am your host, Obari Nyaega. The program brings uh, aspiring leaders and leaders of the day. And this morning, we are lucky and privileged to have upcoming leaders and e governance experts who want to share their aspirations and dreams. Uh, welcome to the studio, Joy and uh, Festus. So we can begin off by a brief introduction of host ladies first. Mm -hmm. Tell us about yourself. Let us know about you a little bit. Joy. Thank you very much, Sieto Bari. My name is Joy Masika. I am a student leader at the Institute of Certified Secretaries. I am privileged to be the current chair of uh, Students Association. I am also um, a law student currently at the Advocates Training Program. Yes, that's uh, a bit about myself. Right. Festus. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Festus Kimeli. I uh, currently a leader, a uh, student uh, ICS board leader. I'm also a graduate from University of Nairobi, being done political science and public administration. I like governance, research, and administration. Right. Yeah. You have some hobbies, Joy. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do have some have some hobbies. All right. I love to read here and there for knowledge and for pleasure, for in, uh, information and knowledge and pleasure that is. Right? Mm -hmm. I also love to do a little bit of music here and there. Um, yes. Right. Right. So moving on, let's try and think about uh, why you are students of governance because uh, CS is more about governance. Why do you have interest and why governance? Why are you studying about governance? Mm, basically, I realized that uh, having done political science and public administration, mm -hmm. I noticed that whatever we were taught at the university, basically, it was not enough. So I needed a profession where I could be taught and shown about governance, administration, and I found IC, uh, CS. Yes. Right. Joy? Uh, uh, for me, the reason why I got interested in governance is because of my background in law. So having done law, um, I was advised that if I could be able to pick up CS, and then I'd be able to get opportunities with, uh, in working with boards, uh, corporate boards. And so that really uh, got me interested because I have an interest in corporate governance uh, in general, good governance and uh, administration. So that is why uh, I decided to do CS to couple it up with my law degree. You know, it also increases my uh, uh, opportunities or my job opportunities. Right. Yeah. You both seem to have done something before doing uh, the certified secretary course. Uh, why, why are you interested in doing more than just a degree and moving on to Meli? Mm, basically, as I had said earlier, when I finished my degree, yes, I noticed that just uh, rather than going for masters on this in the same field, mm -hmm. I noticed that when you look at these professional bodies, when you are called a CS, those who are practicing also, mm -hmm. there's a difference the way they look at issues, the way they look at the governance in general. In general, whatever they the practice is very different from those who have not undergone the same route. So basically, I noticed that I needed to go through that line. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Joe, is there value in getting a multidisciplinary kind of a qualification? Um, I believe there is value right. in having uh, multiple, uh, you know, qualifications, especially in the current job market where most employers are looking for people who have done more than one thing. So that also, of course, they're able to cut down on the cost for employment. So I believe that uh, doing more than one thing uh, gives you a step ahead of your peers mm -hmm. as, as an employee or as a young person who's looking out to join the workforce. And also to the side of the employers, it's an added advantage for them because they're able to get multiple things in one, in one person. On the other hand, you can say that um, it has it has its own challenges, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, we find that we're able to get people who have so many qualifications. They're so good at so many things, but we are not able to get the, a person who has specialized in, in one thing. So mm -hmm. it has its uh, own pros and cons, but I'd say that, of course, it is um, of uh, value to have more than one qualification. So, Kimeli, we have this problem of uh, people having so many qualifications, yes. and but they're not 100% in either of them. You find that most of the time, 
people are lacking specialization. Exactly. Uh, what will you comment about that? Mm, we need to look at it from our educational system. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our education system has been structured such a way that you find somebody has just finished from four, mm -hmm. or maybe university, they are not even sure what field they are going to do, mm -hmm. what, what, which career. So it depends on the reason. Why are you taking this multi, uh, this so many uh, disciplines? Somebody is uh, doing uh, uh, governance at the same time, finance, engineering. So I think it depends with the reason why are you doing this. If you are doing this because so that you can improve your chances of getting employed, I think it's a challenge because let's take for example, somebody finishes a, a university by maybe 25 years. You take all three years doing CS. You are not even sure if you if you, you are really a CS person. Somebody tells you you do H, uh, HRM. So it depends. Like uh, I have a friend who did HRM, mm -hmm. but along the way he got a, a job elsewhere. Okay. So he had to abandon the earlier job, earlier course, went to another. And so you, you realize this person is not doing that for because of the passion, mm -hmm. because of uh, the calling, so you, 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 you get me. Okay. So to me, I think it has to do with our education system, mm -hmm. because people are forced, you're forced to, to, to learn so much from this area, and at the end of the day, you become average. You, mm -hmm. you don't have a very efficient accountant. This guy, this guy can, can do uh, ICT a little bit, the other HRM a little bit, but not, it's not that efficient. Okay. So I think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a challenge as well. All right. Yes. And uh, let's look at uh, the issues of, uh, <laughs> you talk about governance. Yes. Let's look at the higher education. For example, the higher institution of learning, there are spirit of governance structures within them. Maybe you could speak to them and say, how are they helping shape your future as a future leader as well? Mm -hmm. So thank you for your question. Um, when you look at the higher learning institution and the structures of leadership and, and governance, I think it more or less mirrors what is uh, done at the national level because uh, politics uh, in the, in, at the university level or the, at the higher learning level is usually conducted more or less the same like uh, what happens at the national level. So I think uh, having the advantage of going through such a system especially for leaders, aspiring leaders, for the, uh, the national leaders, mm -hmm. it's a good opportunity to, you know, get to learn uh, how things work in, in, in governance settings, in leadership settings. So we find that most of uh, the student leaders are the ones that end up being uh, one of uh, the best leaders in the country because I believe it's also a period where uh, young leaders are mentored and uh, are able to learn a few things here and there on issues of, uh, of leadership and governance. Yes, so I, I believe that um, indeed uh, the, the higher learning institution should encourage you know, uh, these leadership uh, systems and structures and try as much as possible and instill good values so that at the end of the day, because these are the people that will end up being our national leaders, we don't want to end up with national leaders who lack uh, good values, yeah. Is that the same concept we have about uh, civic education when you're doing our national ways, whereby we are trying to tell the people in the village also on our national level to learn something, to understand yeah. the structure? Yeah, to some extent. But okay. what I, I, but uh, my point should be, mm -hmm. why don't we, like, if we structure our education system, let, let's make leadership or governance like a common cause so that we have... Uh, new students maybe uh, those joining uh, first year mm -hmm. they are aware that this is what is supposed to be done exactly it's the, uh, what we've just said but we need to go extra okay yes so we improve the the, the course structures yes and even the orientations uh. yes and we, we ensure that uh, in as much as students vote mm -hmm. they should know that whatever they vote or whatever or whatever they decide mm -hmm. matter okay yes mm -hmm. right mm. let's move to the youth of this country and you know that the government has done a lot of things around youth yes. in terms of trying to empower them. They have put funds, they have put priorities for the youth. Maybe you could speak to it, Kimel, in terms of uh, what you think the government has done and how that has impacted you as a, as a person and as a young people. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. I think it's a good, uh, fair question. 
Mm, my knowledge, I think we have so many programs. There are so many. But uh, do this, uh, do we, if you ask today, how many youth know, understand mm -hmm. that we have these programs? Who are the leaders of these uh, programs? Who, I think we need to have youth running with the with the, with the whole the idea mm -hmm. first when you're coming up with a program let the youth have a say okay yes two let 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 us have this youth running this in as much as we need to uh, help them mm -hmm. we need to have them running these programs so that today if you're told about i think about a uh, youth fund look at the structure we have so many little number of uh, youth okay yeah so i think it's uh, the government has done well but we need to do more okay yes mm. joy yeah so i'd look at it from a point of the youth the young people are very creative and innovative mm -hmm. you'd find so many young people who perhaps have not uh are not very well you know in school have not done very well in school but you'd find um most young people are very creative and they are able to come up with uh solutions that are you know, they changed the world, like the people who, they, the young guy who invented M-Pesa, it was a young person. So uh, the government has done a good thing by coming up with programs and funding for the youth. So, but, but the problem is, as um, my colleague Kimeli says, most youths are not aware of these programs. They do not know that uh, they can actually go to the county and um, apply for tenders and they're able to supply to the county at, at a discounted uh, amount and they'll be able to, you know, um, uh, improve their lives and uh, actually lead, lead a better life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first problem I'd say is that most youths are not aware of these programs. So it is a challenge, especially to the young leaders of the nation today, to ensure that they they uh, go out there to the to the grassroots and they make the youth aware. Okay. They make them know that yes, we have these programs and they're here to assist you in one way or another. And then I'd also like to um maybe just challenge the youths to once you are aware of these, you know, these programs that are ongoing by the government, the government has done its part. So you are supposed to be as aggressive as possible. You know, just don't, don't just sit there and say there are no jobs in Kenya because the government has actually tried to its level best to give opportunities for the young people mm -hmm. it's uh i'd also like to say that sometimes the youth have become indolent and like the maxim says equity favors the vigilant and not uh the indolent so also um what my colleague kimeli say the issue of public participation mm -hmm. as the government is coming up with these uh, programs for the youth uh, are they involving the youth in making these policies in coming up with these programs so that they're not just coming up with um programs that they cannot themselves relate to okay. they are not aware have they done their research to know what challenges the youth are facing is it education is it uh issue of skills is it issue of capital poverty so the government also needs to bring the youth on board and in, engage them in coming up with this program for for it to be a success right you, you talk about government so much but we are the people who vote in governments yeah. Uh, we say in this country, the youth are the majority. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the top leadership, you can barely count with you, you know, your one hand, how many of those are in the age of younger people in terms of 35 and below in top leadership. Mm -hmm. We are now talking about voter registration. I don't know how many of the young people are going out to register, how many of them vote, and why they are not, not able to have as majority of them being in top leadership because that's where policy is made. Mm. Th that's a fair point. It's true that uh, we are talking about the government, you're talking about leadership, yet uh, we are not able to see most of these young people in these leadership positions. And then one would wonder why, if you're the majority of the population, then we expect that um, we are able to vote in young people, you know, inject fresh blood. We've been having the same uh, uh, crop of leadership since. You know, since I was born, since I was young, uh, the, the leaders that we have today have been the leaders. So um, it's it's a challenge to the youth, uh, number one, to take up uh, this leadership. We, we find um, where I come from, when when we say that it's election time, most young people shy away from even trying to vie for one position, or they they take up you know the positions of MCA. Oh, I'm not sure I can be a governor. I'm not sure I can take up 
that position. Maybe I don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the structure, the political structure of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that sometimes it's limiting to the youth. So okay. it's very difficult for the youth to, uh, you know, take up that leadership position. But on the other hand, I also think that uh, the youth uh, have, um, to some extent, they have failed in, in terms of uh, taking up leadership position and that the same people that are voting in the leaders, the same, same leaders that we've had, and we've had the same, same stories of corruption, we've had the same, same people promising us uh, jobs for the youth and nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, even in campus, like, you know, we said earlier, we've seen people who are able to actually do do the work. They're able to uh, lead and they have what it takes to be able to lead and they have what it takes to be able to uh, consider their fellow young people. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, in summary, I'd say uh, the youth have uh, lagged behind in terms of taking up leadership position mm -hmm. and uh, they have depended. Uh, one, what, the other factor I'd say is um, corruption. Uh, so you see most of these uh, leaders, current leaders, will just come hand, hand out cash to young people. Mm -hmm. And because, uh, as they say, we have no jobs, we're just idle at home. So they take that handout and they keep voting in the same, same crop of, of leaders. Mm -hmm. So there's that issue also. And then there's the issue of, uh, like you mentioned, uh, voter registration. Most, most youths um, are not registering to vote. So I can, I, I can say that um, the young leaders, current young leaders that we have, and uh, people who understand, uh, you know, the importance of voting mm -hmm. should be able to go out maybe through the use of social media and rally their fellow youth to vote because it, if not voting is actually voting in bad leadership. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that open. It starts with registering to vote. So you have to go out, go register to be a voter and go voting the right person. Go voting the young person that you're saying, uh, you're complaining, you, you're not represented, but you're not voting that person. That person needs the votes to be able to be there. So if I stand today, then I should be able to count on my fellow youth to vote for me. So if you're not registering to vote for me, then uh, you are sabotaging the cause for, for the youth. So Kimeli, why, why, why are youth not vote, voting in youth? And uh, sometimes we've seen young leaders sometimes behaving very strangely in, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, when sure. they are elected. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what did you comment about that? Um, I look at it from different, so it's some multi-dimensional kind of thing because and as much as uh, we can, we blame the government, we blame the society, mm -hmm. us as youth, mm -hmm. I think everybody has a share of uh, blame. But I will take the point of my colleague Joy when he, she mentioned about the limitation. The youth are limited, not just mentally, but they are politically, uh, uh, actually across it's, uh, uh, across the, their lives, they are limited. Look at it this way. Today, if you want to be an MCA, mm -hmm. you have very good ideas. You've gone through all the, you, 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 you've got all the requirements that uh, are needed, but you need finance. How will you get? Mm -hmm. Kenya today, we understand it's a capitalistic uh, society. For you to, to accumulate wealth, you need to take some time for uh, for for you for us to say maybe you will be able to vie for an MCA. You need campaign funds. You need I don't know registration all and those all logistics. Mm -hmm. That's one one area. Another area is the limitation of uh, they will they look at things. They are limited mentally because uh, mentally because you realize today I'm concerned actually about the youth who are just above 18 years. Mm -hmm. This those are people they were born maybe early 2000. Mm -hmm. What they saw they were actually they got uh, the NAC government. They are not aware of our history. Mm -hmm. Today, if you ask a youth about our history, our story, they, they are not very aware. So I'll go back to the education system. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do we nurture, nurture this uh, youth? As they grow, we need to let them know where we've, we've come from mm -hmm. and where we are going. They need to know our history so that they are aware of where we are going. Another area maybe I'll talk about um, when we talk about youth is uh, where you see, if you want to, like, if you want to control people, mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, youth unemployment. The youth today have been limited. 
to maybe certain ideas they are not they, they, they cannot they can't think of uh, on their own because today they have finished school they don't have jobs they don't they have nothing to do so they are you realize that it's very easy for those national uh, other leaders especially those uh, who want to take advantage of this youth they come when you look at what they sell to this youth if you reason and think critically you, you, you notice this is something that will not happen el elsewhere mm -hmm. it will not happen in europe mm -hmm. it's only in africa so i think the youth have been limited in so many in so many areas but again i need to challenge the uh, this youth you don't have to buy for political it, it's not a mass you can buy but show your leadership mm -hmm. from the community level people will respect you Today, uh, we have a leader from Ement, I don't, I don't know, Ement, the youngest MP. Mm -hmm. This guy had nothing, but he had vision. He explained to the people, he told them, I need, I'll do this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And people actually listened to him. Actually, they campaigned for him. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, like we are totally limited. We can do something. You don't have to, to be a political leader. You can be a leader elsewhere. You can be a leader in the church. Mm -hmm. Show the society what you can do so uh, my challenge is uh, let's try mm -hmm. yeah let's try okay. today in france we have the actually i think is the macron is the youngest president uh, something like that yeah but i i see a brighter future mm -hmm. especially with the devolution actually the youth are now realizing that they don't need to be fixed to this tribal tribal or this ethnic uh, politics mm -hmm. most of them have noticed that when we talk about youth we are suffering as youth we, uh, 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 depending either you are which, whichever tribe you come from mm -hmm. so this thing is actually it's going to bring youth together I, I really hope as Max says uh, Karl Marx that uh, this those those who are suffering one day they will wake up and understand that you need to come together you don't uh, necessarily need to support your own maybe as a youth mm -hmm. but look look for that genuine leader somebody who will be there for you as youth today when you talk about uh, these uh, loans uh, uh, how do you call it? even help so many so many of these youth have uh, a lot of loans that are there. they have not paid they mm. don't know how to how to pay that's why it's very easy to control them okay yes you paint a picture of also some bit of hope yes and some bit of despair mm -hmm. which means also we have seen very many problems around mental health for the youth uh, people going into drugs you see hard or people you know uh, having suicidal tendencies and stuff mm -hmm. how how are we going to manage this situation and what is causing all this by the way well um my take would be, like Kimeli uh, has explained, you find that uh, most young people are in a lot of debts right now. We have the, the, uh, the, call the mo mobile, um, the mobile learning systems mm -hmm. that have, have come into the market and they have swept away our youth. You find that our youth has, uh, they download these apps, they uh, loan the money and they're unable to pay and they have been listed in the CRB. Uh, thanks to the regulation that now it, it has stopped for, for a while, you know, mm -hmm. stopped mm -hmm. listing people in the CRB because, I mean, uh, most youths are the people that you're going to find in that CRB. You need a certificate of good conduct for you to even get a job to be employed by the government. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a job, you, you're in a lot of debt, um, you have held loan, uh, it's too much for a young person. So you find that this can be one of the reasons why they fall into depression, they fall they feel like they are helpless. They have uh, a lot of responsibilities that they are not able to bear. And um, and the other thing, like I said, they lack information about, you know, the opportunities that are there, how they are able to help themselves, you know, uh, and find an opportunity that will give them money so that they're able to repay their loans. So that, that in my opinion, is uh, one of the reasons that youth are falling into depression. Mm -hmm. And I'd say also the negative impacts of, uh, of social media uh, we're seeing uh, most young people are making it and, you know, others are not. So also some people get that sort of peer pressure and they fall into depression. So it could be a lot of things. And also, uh, for, I'd say 
also the education system you'd find that in some in in most universities uh students you know like you'd find a situation where the school keeps on going on strikes and uh, they keep having missing marks they so they have a lot of things they have a lot of things to think about mm -hmm. they still have school they are failing their exams there's no one to talk to them so it's it's really a lot and uh, I'd say that yes in as much as we are not the first people to be young we're not the first people to be going through these challenges it may be unique yes it may not be what our parents went through mm -hmm. but I'd like to maybe just say that it's important for schools and even communities to put up programs that will be able to assist the youth mm -hmm. to speak out, you know, so that they're able to say, this is what I'm going through, instead of them locking themselves up in the room, you know, abusing drugs and doing all sorts of uh, and manner of things that may lead them deeper into depression, depression and at the end of the day, we find them taking their lives away. So um, I'd like to say that um, it's important to speak out mm -hmm. as a youth, it's important to speak out once you're going through something so that uh, you, you're you able to find help, yeah? Uh, don't keep quiet, don't lock yourself in the rooms and, and uh, you know, abuse drugs or, you know, uh, take away your life. It's important to seek help. So we understand, yes, there are challenges. Being young also, it, I think we are at the age where we are uh, really trying to figure out our future. So it can be a bit, you know, it can be a bit challenging for a young person. We've never been this all and you see in the near future we are expected to have uh done a b c d mm -hmm. in terms of our lives so it can be a lot to think about so it's important that we take um a day at a time it's important that we seek help where we need help mm -hmm. but also the community and and uh, even the government should be able to put up structures that will be able to assist the youth to seek this help because mm -hmm. if I tell you to speak out and there's no counseling is expensive, you know, in order to get a psychologist, uh, you need to to pay, um, you know, a lot of money to access those services. So the community, the church can uh, come up with programs for counseling, the, the, uh, the, the area chief, you know, the young leaders in the society and the general, uh, uh, you know, county government and even the, at the higher level, they can come up with uh, programs uh, are able to assist the youth talk about the issues they are facing and uh, the, the solutions that can be found for them so that we don't lose our lives. Millie, yes. she talks about social media. Mm -hmm. I know youth are very big with social media. Yeah, sure. uh, information, misinformation. Uh, people sometimes feeling uh, less off because of just basically like followers and mm -hmm. likes and yeah, all yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I don't know how we can manage this for our own advantage as uh, young people. Mm, the the issue of social media is a uh, it's a blessing and it's also a curse. Uh, today, we have so many uh, young people who are making it because of social media. Mm -hmm. Their businesses are booming because of social media. Most of the youth have actually gotten a chance to showcase what they can do today. If you want, if you are a good singer. You don't, uh, it's not like the old days. You need to know somebody, just have your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think so many youth, uh, this social media has helped so many youth. But at the same time, let us look at uh, the other side. Yeah, it has come with uh, its own challenges um, that were not there like 10 years ago. Yeah, and we need to ask ourselves why, why, why today? Why most of the, uh, of the youth? You notice that the economic challenges, I will tie this with economic challenges, because today it's not just the youth suffering, even the parents. Mm -hmm. The parents today, because of that, uh, because of the harsh economic times, they are not able to cope with these challenges. They are not able to have their, you, you, the previous role of guiding, having children, have, having guiding their, their children, like, we used to do before. Mm -hmm. So you notice the children are like somehow left on their own. And as much as we are talking about uh, being independent, there are so many things they are learning from there. There are so many things they go through. Uh, peer pressure. She talked okay. about peer pressure. Today, mm -hmm. somebody, a, a, a child, I remember when I, was, uh, get my, I got my first phone, I think when I was in high school. Today, somebody is in class grade four. <laughs> They have a phone, yeah. but now you understand this. This guy, the mental growth, mm -hmm. 
they need the psychological growth they need to grow step by step so yeah. you notice at uh, maybe a dollar sensage somebody has a phone they go they go through maybe cyberbullying a little bit yeah. they take it to the uh, to the extreme so i leave this challenge to all uh, the youth and also the parents we need to not really to restrict but we need to keep to ensure that we are aware the parents today they are not aware of what their children are doing mm -hmm. once they lock themselves in their rooms they don't follow okay. so the parents we should try try and understand what these uh, children are, are going through what they are all about uh, when they have their phones mm -hmm. not really to restrict them but just to to have them with you again the youth are okay i don't know how how will how will, uh, how will, they, how will, how will, how will they control themselves um this uh, social media I, i'll just tell them to pick what's good try as much as possible mm -hmm. pick what's good there's a lot of westernization people today like in nairobi you have so many people who they don't they are not aware about their culture mm -hmm. and the culture they are adopting the, the western culture we watch a lot of movies we see a lot of things so today it's not like yesterday when somebody would know this is a taboo this is right this mm -hmm. is wrong but this is a free society mm -hmm. to the government i think we need to come up with i don't know policies so that we ensure that uh, to, uh, if uh, if a child has a phone mm -hmm. a computer the sites they go what whatever they do should resonate with their age mm -hmm. okay. yes okay. you don't uh, register for uh, an email ac account or youtube when you are not that age so that at least you are limited some are not really uh we understand the social protection uh, the um, information uh, protection act but it should be a bit they they should have that freedom but they need to we need to guide them okay. uh, uh, the last point is maybe perhaps maybe we can have programs programs that we guide these children mm -hmm. today uh, we can have them in churches schools in mosques so that we teach them step mm -hmm. by step so that they understand as they grow they understand these things okay yes so as we conclude uh, uh, joy i will request you to look at the camera and uh, tell uh, the younger people um your aspirations your dreams how you see the the future to be like and uh, you know give them some words of wisdom as you conclude joy thank you um so i'd like to say that i am privileged to be born in this generation i i feel like uh, we are a privileged generation in that we are able to do whatever it is that we put our minds to do we have the advantage of of social media let us uh, use social media to our advantage let us use it as an information tool let us use it to you know put out to the world what it is that we have and uh, let us be hopeful that uh, tomorrow shall be better let us not uh, fall into depression and and try to commit suicide because uh you can always speak out you can always uh speak out what you're going through and you can be helped out of whatever it is that you're going through so thank you very much know that you as a young person you are important and you can be able to do whatever it is that you have set out to do yeah. mate you can also give your uh, last remarks okay thank you thanks so much um what i'll tell the youth today brothers and sisters they still up uh the future is bright we have so many things that go away uh, let's take advantage of social media take advantage of everything that comes your way today at least the society the story is changing we are going to a, 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 the cbc kind of structure i know the education system has missed us a bit but that's not the reason to blame to lament you everybody has something to do you have something if it's a talent you have a skill you can do it you don't have to be a good runner for you to make it you don't have to be a, an intellectual like you, you have something to do don't ever compare yourself with the others look at yourself there is a reason why you were born so take advantage of that reason take advantage work hard and seek god thank you Thank you very much. That was uh, Joy Masika and uh, Festa Skimeli.
talking to us about their journey and uh, their aspirations as uh, upcoming leaders and governance experts. That was the weekly governance voice uh, brought to you courtesy of the Institute of Certified Secretaries, Howard by Bafunde. I am your host, Obare Nyaega. Until next week, see you. <laughs>